Yeah, good morning. <laughs> so great to be in your class, my weekly schedule to be here for one hour. So it's a joy to be here. Let's pray and let's uh, get into the word for today. Let's pray. Abba Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for um, strengthening us, Father God, and continually leading us by your Holy Spirit and your word. Father, even as we take time to learn your word this morning, we pray that it will impact the way we think, oh God, that it will help us to, um, uh, Father, keep, Lord, coming higher and stronger in you, Lord. Father God, thank you for all that we are learning. And uh, Lord, we commit this session into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've been talking about the keys to supernatural ministry, how you and I can uh, walk in the supernatural, which Jesus has already promised. We looked at a few keys. One was to understand the fact that um, there are two realms. So we who are in Christ, the victory from the spiritual realm, we are able to enforce it into the natural realm. So when we when we recognize this, um, you know, we will not take the conclusions of the natural realm as the final. We override it with the spiritual. That is one thing. Second, we saw the key of faith. How faith is what unlocks the supernatural power of God. And so we must be full of faith. We must learn to operate by faith, step by step, decision by decision. And then uh, we look at the word of God, right? The power of God's word we saw last time that it has creative ability. It carries authority. Um, and so the operation of the word in and through our lives is necessary. We also saw how the word it acts as a sword against the devil. It is a seed that we can sow and reap a mighty harvest. So the word of God will bring the supernatural into our lives. Today, we are going to look at another key to operate in the supernatural, which is the renewed mind. The way we, we you could say, think, okay, but it's it's more than that. Our thinking as believers must be based in the word of God. And we need a total transformation of mind, which is what a renewed mind is all about. Renewed mind is a complete turnaround, a transformed mind. So we as believers have the opportunity to function with three kinds of minds. And uh, incidentally, on Sunday, also this is what we discussed. Uh, and we are going to look at the same thing today. Uh, so let's first begin with Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 11. Could someone turn to it and read it, please? Yes, uh, 6 to 11. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, yes. so are my ways higher than your ways, yeah. and my thoughts uh, than your thoughts. Uh, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return uh, there but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and I and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. All right. Thank you, uh, Vimal. So we'll focus on verses 8 and 9 here, where God says, 
my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways my ways says the lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts and this is so true if each of us consider our lives before coming into christ the plans that we may have had for ourselves would have looked so different from what we are doing right now the journey that we are making right now and as we see how good god has been the way he has led us the way he is equipping us the opportunities that he has given us the grace the gifts uh, the people in our lives it's amazing we are so blessed to see that this is what god had thought for us this is what god had determined for us these are the purposes of god that he is leading us in uh but imagine if we had gone according to our own thought process where would you and i be you know many times i think about that if i had gone the path that i desired or you know i thought right where would i have ended up uh, one thing is for sure you know without god there's no life there's no life there's no uh thriving so thank god thank god you know we are in christ and now we are following his ways and our lives are so blessed okay so let's always note that we should be aiming to understand the thoughts of god regarding everything so uh, even when it comes to uh, our future we can ask god and say god i want to be this i want to be that or i want this to be my future right but as a believer it's a constant way of thinking where we given to the thoughts and the purposes of god so that's why we pray we say god you show me the way uh you speak to my heart and i'm yielding to what you want for my life because we are constantly giving into the higher thoughts my ways my thoughts are higher than your thoughts my ways are higher than your ways so god always has higher thoughts better thoughts higher ways the goal that you and i need is to hold on to those higher thoughts uh, could someone quickly read from ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 Ephesians chapter two verse ten. Yeah. For we are his workmanship. Yes. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. Yes. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hmm. So that tells us that we are God's workmanship. He designed us, planned us. Even before we could understand what plans He has for us, He had a plan. Now, what are we supposed to do? get a hold of those plans and walk in those plans it's as simple as that when we say god has a dream for us we have to understand the dream of god for our lives and walk in that dream so that is what the renewed mind is all about the renewed mind says i am going to recognize the higher thoughts the higher ways of god and i'm going to go by that not my own but according to what god wants so we are his workmanship created in christ for good works which he prepared beforehand so we want to walk in those good works that god wants for us having understood the fact that god has higher thoughts and plans what kind of mind will understand those thoughts now that's the question we are asking for a believer we've already said there are three uh not parts of the mind but three minds that are operational in the life of every believer we'll understand these three minds and then we will go into discussing how to apply them so you probably already know this you would have done it in um, you know the human soul uh, course but we look at it again first is the natural mind and for this let's read from first corinthians chapter 2 verses 11 through 
first corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 to 16 yes for what man knows the thing of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the thing of god except the spirit of god now we have have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god these things we all also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with the spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he who is spiritual judges all, judges all things yet the yet he himself is rightly judged by no one for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we, we have the mind of christ amen so here verse um, 14 it says but the natural mind does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned so there is a mind in us which is called as the natural mind which operates on the basis of our five senses there is a limitation to the way the natural mind perceives things because if we cannot see hear feel touch taste it does not exist that's what the natural mind thinks like okay so it's it's limited uh, and it cannot understand the things of the spirit. So for the natural mind, if you say there is a God, God created uh, the heavens by his word. Maybe we can find, you know, scientific answers uh, you know, to the T uh, so that we can explain every phenomenon. But up until that time, the natural mind will say, how is it possible? How can it be? What are you saying? Everything came to be in a moment. The whole, the whole earth and the creation, everything was made in seven days. No way. Logic. This is defying logic. Because it's limited by the five senses. So why are we talking about the natural mind? Same thing that we said earlier when we talked about the spiritual realm and the natural realm. There are conclusions in our natural world that can be overrided by the spiritual world. The same way, there are things that are going on in the natural world that God can intervene in. Okay? But the natural mind says, how? Can it be? I don't think so. It's impossible. We just saw verse 14 over there, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. The natural mind cannot receive spiritual things. Now, if we say, don't worry, there will be a miracle, the natural mind will say, no, it doesn't make sense. There's no logic. So for a believer, we have a natural mind. Let's also say that the natural mind is not bad. It's a good thing. Because most of the time we are operating with our natural minds. Our everyday activities, our uh, choices, our decisions. Primarily, it's through the natural mind. So, you and I must develop the natural mind. However, we need to also know that there is spiritual mind which has to be developed because we want to see the supernatural take place in our lives. Okay, so there is a natural mind. It's limited by the five senses. Uh, it perceives the natural world. But it cannot receive the things of God. It cannot receive spiritual things. And the natural mind is good. You and I must develop the natural mind. So that's regarding the natural mind. Let's look at the next mind that we have, which is the carnal mind. There are two passages of scripture. Could someone turn to Romans 8, verses 5 to 8? And then 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 3. We'll talk about the carnal mind. Romans 8, 5 to 8. Yes. 
for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh yes but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is empty against god for it is not subject to law of god or not needed can be Hmm. so then those who are in the flesh cannot be cannot please god yes okay a couple of things so we see that the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god nor indeed can be this is verse 7 so the carnal mind what are the desires of the carnal mind it's the natural mind it's it's sort of uh, normal you know it's uh, analytical um, there's reasoning in the natural mind and it's a good thing so you're, it it gives you the logic that we all need but when it comes to the carnal mind from what we can see from this passage verse 7 it's enmity against god meaning it gives us a picture that the carnal mind is not good natural mind is good carnal mind is not good why because we also saw that it does not yield to the things of god it has its own desires right uh, so the carnal mind is nothing but the mind of the flesh that's another way that we can put it where the carnal mind draws us to do things that are against god do believers also have the carnal mind or is it just the world unbelievers even the believers flesh and uh, you know flesh is like an internal pull from our side to sin against god i'll come to you and of course we have satan and his demons who are working externally to cross to do the wrong things we have to find we we need to work on ourselves so that we can overcome the temptations or the pull which is internal or external okay but all believers must recognize that there is a carnal mind and the carnal yielding to the carnal mind will lead us to sin the carnal mind is enmity against god yes akil yes that uh, all these three elements the lust of the flesh lust of the world and the pride of life summarizes almost everything in a carnal mind or are there something outside of these three elements okay is it uh, is it exhaustive yeah lust of the flesh lust of the uh, eyes and the pride of life honestly i haven't thought about it if it uh, if it comprises of all the sinful behaviors uh but yeah i i honestly don't know i think that it does cover uh but i cannot substantiate it with any scripture lust of the flesh and ah uh, pride of life ah uh, yeah see there are only three that it mentions lust of the eyes lust of the flesh and pride of life so when we say eyes it has to do with being uh, attracted to the worldly things also so that falls in that category yeah it comes under the carnal mind so as long as we are feeding the carnal mind these are the things that it will draw us to and we already know that these things are not from the father okay and we must stay away from it so the carnal mind does not yield good fruit let's look at first corinthians 3 verses 1 to 3 i brethren could not speak to you as to spiritual people but as to carnal as to babes or in christ 
I feed you with milk and not with salt food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where these, where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Okay, thank you. Uh, suppose so, we find. that paul is writing to the corinthian church who are quite mighty in spiritual things and yet he tells them look at the way you all are behaving there is strife there's envy okay there's division among all of you are you not carnal another way of understanding carnal earlier we said carnal mind yields to the flesh uh it it does not you know it is enmity against god but now we can also add that the carnal mind is a sign of immaturity that's what he's telling the believers he says are you not carnal are you still not acting you know like babes like little children little children are the ones who uh, lack that sense of accommodating another person and the believers seem to have been behaving like that so same thing <laughs> applies to us today if we operate from the carnal mind we are going against the things of god we are yielding to the flesh and we are being very immature so all of this shows us that a believer must not operate from the carnal mind let's look at the third one here which should be the renewed mind would someone read from romans 12 verse 2 please and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god yes so don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind this renewed mind in other words is the spiritual mind also which is where a believer needs to connect to the supernatural the natural mind connecting to the natural things but the spiritual mind is what is going to connect us to the spiritual things we need the renewal of our minds or the transformation of this mind how is that going to happen you know paul said don't be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of the mind so a couple of things about renewal of the mind one is it is a process uh and secondly transformation comes through constant renewal of the mind when we have a renewed mind it is not in conformity to the way the world thinks or the way the world functions there are greater options the way we said earlier with god all things are possible that's the way the renewed mind thinks it's not limited to the five senses so how do we renew the mind or how do we understand the renewing of the mind i'm sure you would have studied a lot about it earlier uh in a simple way i like to imagine it like this if this room is built with mud bricks so that's how we come to god with our mindset but renewed mind is removing one brick at a time and replacing it with a cement brick something that is stronger so i'm removing my thought of low self esteem and i am replacing it with the thought of my identity in christ so what just happened one brick one uh uh you know weak brick was removed and a strong brick has been put in place so i renewed my thoughts about my identity now in the same way as we go on we said earlier that we have our own thoughts for our lives we are reading the word of god and as we understand what god's word talks about our calling our purpose grace gifts anointing one more brick comes off 
and we are replacing it with a stronger brick. What is that? The word of God about my calling, my purpose. Okay, relationships. I have my own way of thinking, but as I'm studying the word of God, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, brick by brick, brick by brick. What's happening? That whole wall is being changed now. It was made up of mud bricks earlier. Now it's being made up of cement bricks or something stronger. That is the way even our mind gets renewed by the thoughts from God's word. And you and I need to really work on it. And this renewed mind is the spiritual mind. Remember earlier we said the natural mind <coughs> does not receive the things of God. It does not have the capacity to receive what God is saying he will do. But the spiritual mind or the renewed mind, when I carry a renewed mind, when God says something, I'm able to believe it. I'm able to move forward with it. So it's really a process that you and I need. So when we are ministering to people, we've talked about different instances, let's say healing or uh, uh, you know, helping somebody who's going through a mental health challenge. The renewed mind will say, yes, God can do this. And so here we are, ministering to that person, okay, praying for that person, believing that a breakthrough is possible. But the natural mind will say, it's not possible. All the options are exhausted. But we need a renewed mind. If you and I are going to be people supernatural, walking in the supernatural, it's not going to happen if you go with a natural mind. Because natural mind, with its limitations, will say, sorry, stop right here. Only the renewed mind will say, we can push. We can trust God for a miracle. Because God's word says that a miracle is possible. The carnal mind, of course, I'm not even talking about the carnal mind because the expectation is for a believer, just shut it down. Every day you have to shut it down. No question of talking about the carnal mind at all. Carnal mind should be like, uh, you know, zero operational. We are here operating out of the natural when required, but predominantly the renewed mind, opening us up to the possibilities of all that God can do. So we have a very interesting uh, uh, incident in the Bible. We are going to look at it. This is in John chapter 6, when there was a requirement for food to feed the multitudes. So John chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. If someone can quickly read through that passage, we'll discuss uh, about what's happening there. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But but this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad, lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish but what are what are they among so many then jesus said make the people sit down now there was such there there was much grass in the place so the men at the men sat down in the num, number about five thousand and jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those who sitting down and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to 
his disciples gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with them with the frag fragments of the five barley loaves and were which were left over by those who had eaten then those men when they had seen the sign that jesus did said this is truly the prophet who is come into the world this is an incident where we find two people firstly philip responding to the need and later we have andrew also responding to the need so what's happening here uh jesus was ministering and there there are people who are hungry and jesus says where shall we buy bread that these may eat why do you think jesus is asking a question yeah so the the scripture itself says he was testing think about this god knows what he is going to do and yet he is asking what shall we do where shall we buy bread so it it is uh it's like god wants to see our faith he knows what he can do but he wants to see whether we know what he can do so he is asking the question how where shall we get the bread to feed so many people so we have two people responding firstly philip who says uh 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little so philip which mind is he operating from natural, natural mind so he seems like the uh, very detailed person who takes account of all things so he must have done his calculations and he has come up with a point he says 200 denarii worth of bread meaning a lot if we had so much money okay if our budget was so much that's today's language if we had this much this much budget even then we cannot afford uh, meals for all these people who are in front of us so very logical and nothing wrong with that right and sometimes that's how we also think very only logical only natural mind we look at the situation it's and as if god is asking how are we going to do this and we say lord this is the budget how to do you know maybe they would he would have calculated i wonder how quickly he came up with the budget right he probably knew the prices of the bread was he a foodie i don't know but so quickly so he knows 200 denarii today we might say okay how to feed the multitudes lord on swiggy it is so much <laughs> on zomato it is so much if we go to the shop down the road uh, the food is this much price so excel sheet work it out for 200 people so much 500 people so much 5000 people uh, this is the amount sorry master we don't have the budget <laughs> so that's his answer to jesus limitation from the natural world so i remember i am uh, whenever i read this passage i am reminded of uh, short term bible college which we ha- held recently some of you were there before you all left and because the number of students who were coming was uh, larger than our general batch we needed good accommodation for them so some of you also helped remember you you we all went looked around and all uh for a good place so it so happened that uh, um there were options but there were problems like oh budget is too high distance is too far so all this was going on for a long time and uh, really the situation was somewhat like this where it was hard to believe god how are we going to get a place where we can accommodate so many students comfortably um so as we did the calculations okay some of some more students they were involved in it they know 
every day we were wondering <laughs> one more day is gone one more day is gone we've not made a decision it seemed like a tough decision because things are not falling in place like philip he says lord 200 denarii will not be enough lord logically we are stuck but we prayed and prayed and prayed so anyway it always energizes me when i think of stbc because at one point it felt like it's impossible to get what we are looking for but um, miraculously and i remember this was quite close to the students uh, coming and uh, that sunday was supernatural sunday in church and the sermon that pastor had written it said uh, believe god for supernatural provision believe god for uh, you know supernatural intervention he had written those statements and uh, we share right from from uh, his notes so when i was standing there at north church and i was preaching i was literally preaching to myself i don't know if people understood that or not but i was preaching to myself and i was saying believe god for supernatural provision god can do this and you know god can make it happen and it happened that very day um i did not know that you know there was an individual who who had this particular accommodation who is a believer and uh, that person the moment he heard about the needs that we have uh, he said hey why are you worried like we have this place and it all just kind of came together it came together in one day so i preached that in the morning and before i am going home the problem was already solved because within the budget and all whatever we had written down there was a suitable place which was already available and i was really like god it's amazing how you work like we, i could not have gone looking on the streets to find that place but you knew to make that divine connection within a couple of hours to release that supernatural provision right and it was miraculous because we had almost 100 you know around 100 students come down and uh, many of them left saying it was one of the best experiences of their life so they had all you know praises for uh, their time here in bangalore and we were so blessed one thing we know it's not us because we were like philip calculating <laughs> lord excel sheet how lord this this how how it was as if jesus was asking okay i'm sending 100 students <laughs> can you do this <laughs> right but it was not working out logically we were doing our efforts however god did the miraculous when we chose to believe him every day we used to pray every time we had a meeting we would pray we would say lord uh, give us the best make a way for the best and uh, it's so energizing whenever we look back at how god worked it out uh, so anyway coming back to what we are discussing here so philip operating from the natural mind and the natural mind will tell us no we've hit the wall there's no solution what about andrew simon peter's brother here is a person operating from the renewed mind he says verse 9 there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish but what are they among so many it's as if very diplomatic he knows jesus can but uh, he says lord there is this option uh, but you know will it even work he sort of putting it like that before jesus but think about this how could andrew think like that it's small lunch lunch box he is telling jesus to solve this problem of feeding the multitudes we have a lunch box is it logical does it make any sense no spiritual mind possibilities in god so andrew being a disciple of jesus he knew what jesus could do so he is operating out of the renewed mind and he is saying there is a possibility naturally we've come to the end of possibilities but 
spiritually jesus can do this so this is what god wants from us to think like this in situations where uh we we cannot make it otherwise right but how often do we think like andrew how we can just take this as uh, uh you know we could we could say like the philip mind or just for our understanding the natural way that philip thought or the andrew way of thinking renewed way of thinking how much percentage would would we attribute to these two minds you know operational in us so we've got to really learn to operate from the renewed mind circumstance by circumstance situation by situation say no i can do it maybe somebody comes to us and they say hey here is the opportunity will you pray and we say no 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 i can't do it natural mind says you've never done it before you know many other things maybe you're not loud enough you're not confident enough this that no you can't do it natural mind but renewed mind says god is giving me this opportunity i can do all things through christ who strengthens me he is a spirit of wisdom and knowledge he rests upon my life i'm going to take it up i'll try do it see it's just it's it's one particular um moment in our lives but we have the option are we going to operate from the natural mind or are we going to operate from the spiritual mind every time let's make a choice if it goes beyond the logical reasoning let's operate from the spiritual mind and say yes god i will believe you and then of course we saw the miracles took place um in this particular case of john chapter 6 five loaves and two fish which was given to jesus multiplied given to the men who were seated over there plus how many did they get as leftovers 12 baskets unthinkable as if feeding the multitudes was not enough god is showing off his glory and he's saying okay come on extra <laughs> there's some extra food here so uh, actually one of the children i know when we were discussing about this particular uh, passage uh, she told her sunday school teacher i believe that uh, uh, so why were there 12 baskets left over and the answer was jesus wanted them to take some something for snacks so <laughs> lunch and extra snacks also so that's the reason god gave them some left over that was her answer but yeah i thought that was quite funny um so god is so amazing that he can do miracles and supply in abundance but someone had to connect with their renewed mind to expect that jesus can do this if that day it was only philip and his natural mind operating this would not have happened miracle would not have happened for the miracle andrew came in with that renewed mind and said there is a possibility and god can do this so uh something for us to learn always operate out of the renewed mind think about peter peter is walking on the water okay in the first go this is in matthew chapter 14 verses 22 to 23 in the first go he says you know like lord ask me to come to you and jesus says come peter steps out of the boat starts walking on the water which mind is he operating from spiritual mind renewed mind then he looks at the winds he looks at the surroundings takes his eyes off of jesus he starts to sink and then thank god you know jesus has mercy on him pulls him out the time when he sank which mind was he operating from yeah natural mind because logic says you can't walk on water it's not scientific see in this situation he needed the renewed mind he should have never disconnected from the renewed mind but he did one incident 
in one minute he is in the renewed mind one minute goes to the natural mind and that's it so god wants us to remain in the renewed mind continually and as we experience the miracles of god uh, and as god calls us to do different things we step out with faith but after some time what happens the doubts start coming the questions start coming we are wondering is it really was it really god did i hear him right and our faith begins to decrease right and also we are not engaging the renewed mind where we are saying let me trust god you know pull out all the scriptures declare the scriptures and uh, keep holding on god will come through if he has spoken he will make it happen so uh, to remain in the renewed mind not like peter one minute he is in the renewed mind and the moment reality hits him he is gone off to the natural mind so there is an invitation for all of us to operate out of the renewed mind let me pause here i think we'll have to talk about the renewed mind again in next class which we shall do but if there are any questions or thoughts ha huh. yes yes yeah yeah um okay But you see, other passage here. I'm not. It's in the book of Luke, right? Yeah. So, uh, I am actually not very clear on that. I need to find out because I think one passage is in the book of Matthew. No, that's fine. The huh. question actually is no. Uh, for example if you have to connect that in our uh, natural life if jesus has done something like this for the disciples for right. the first time right they didn't uh, they doubted and uh, god like tests philip yes but for the second time it's like obviously it's it's possible more easier to for them to believe believe true so in our lives when uh, there is some circumstance that jesus has delivered us in the past for whatever uh, thing in the past huh. and the similar challenge when you face it again it's quite easy to you know believe that yeah he delivered and then thing but is it not sometimes challenging to you know believe something really new or something uh, a different thing uh, experience in your life that you faced and then uh, how is it that i can actually yeah so see uh, we uh, what you're saying makes sense it becomes easier when we have experienced uh, god earlier uh, however if if that that does not exist like you don't have a uh, an earlier experience to fall back on we can go by the nature of god we can go by the word of god even the word of god opens up possibilities that's not happened in my experience but when i see that <clears throat> the word says that all things are possible i i can uh, stretch my faith to see something new happen also yeah so that's why reading more of the word will will open up the possibilities right okay great so we'll discuss more we'll discuss further in the upcoming class and uh, we'll just stop for now could somebody from the online batch please pray heavenly father we thank you lord for this time you have given us my master to understand the renewed mind my master that we can operate through the renewed mind into your spiritual realm my master lord i pray that everybody who attended this class will be uh, drawing something from your word my master lord thank you lord and guide us in our ways to know more truth about you my master in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen amen thank you sister gertrude uh, and thank you everyone god bless you have a good week ahead